Resul-i Ekrem ve Nebi Muhterem sallallahu aleyhi ve Efendimiz Hazretlerinin aziz fak münevver mutahar ruh şeriflerine salavat şerifi getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır olar. Ali Esbahçı Tahret Evladı Resul-i Eshab bizim efendilerimizin Sayın Enbiya Zemme Resulü Fihan Hazretlerine ve ruh şeriflerine Dinimiz Bilal Ahmet Radiyallahu anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sayyidü Seyyid Şabdül Kerim El Kıbrıs'a Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve alel husus bu caminin bayinisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezzin kayınlarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahi için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Yavuzu billahi ve şeytanu racim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim إن الله بملائك فمسن على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Enne hamadullah ta'ala ve ne gıstafirin eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve neşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve rasuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve ashabi tabi khulafen raşni mahdin min ba'dihi. وزرمتی علا تحقیق خصوصا میخوام علامتی خلاف رسول علا تحقیق عمر المؤمنین حضرت ابو بکر و عمر اسمان و علی و علا بکر صبح تابین رضوان الله تعالى عليه مجمعین یا یه المؤمن الحاضرون اتاق الله تعالى و تا این الله هم الذين تاق و الذين هم مخسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين و صلاة و سلام على اشرف الانبیاء و مرسلین سیدنا مولانا محمد و علا آله و صحبه اجمعین all praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to Allah who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the night. And made the darkness and the light. Yet those who disbelieve equate rivals unto their Lord. It is he who has created you from clay and then decreed a time period for you that is known to him. Yet you doubt within yourselves. And he is Allah in the heavens and on earth. He knows what you hide and what you reveal. And he knows that which you earn. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our master, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi sallatu wasalam. Ya Allah, send blessings in our master Muhammad who opened what was closed, who sealed what had gone before the helper of truth by the truth, the guide to your straight path. And on his family, may these blessings be equal to his tremendous position and grandeur. And may peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar al-Faruq, Hazrat Osman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We are giving our thankfulness, we are giving our shukur that our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has created us as humans and has given us the honor of being in the ummah of his Habib Sayyidina Muhammad One of the greatest gifts that can be given to a man is to be in association, in sohbat with the righteous. Being in association, being in companionship, being in companionship with the ones that Allah loves, it lets a person reach to his reality. Because we have not been created to be alone and to be lonely. Hazrat ibn Umar radiallahu an is telling us that the Holy Prophet والسلام, prohibited isolation. That a man spend the night alone or travel alone. We must be in Jamaat. But who do we want to be joined with? The Quran Karim is telling us of the best of the companions. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, then they will be in the companionship of those on whom Allah has shown His favor. Of the Prophets and the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada and the Salihin. And what a beautiful companionship it is. Sadaqallah al-Azim. How will we know who they are? The Holy Prophet والسلام, told us. Someone asked him, Ya Rasulullah, which of our companions is best? And his reply was, The one whose appearance reminds you of Allah and whose speech increases you in knowledge and whose actions remind you of the hereafter. Muslims, non-Muslims, the whole world needs to know this. There are people like this in this world. There are still people like this in this world. There are people in this world whose life is zikrullah, whose breath is a Quran Karim, and whose character is a sunnah of the Holy Prophet Us, we in this Jamaat, we are witnesses to the presence of such rijal, such men in this world. What has brought us together in this place? What has formed this brotherhood? The foundation in this way? It is our Shaykh, our Murshid, our guide, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi, our Rabbani. May Allah sanctify his secret and raise his station. But today, let us remember him and speak about him, the one whom Allah loves. Because remembering the righteous ones, it is in and of itself, it is a mercy just to remember them. Hazrat Sufyan al Thawri radiallahu an is saying, when you remember the righteous, mercy descends upon you. We are in need of this mercy. This whole world is in need of that mercy. Tomorrow we are going to remember that it is six years since our Shaykh continued his journey and was removed from this lowest of the low world. We should not just remember his Urs as the day that he was veiled. We should use it as a chance to remember everything about him. We knew him. We sat with him. We learned from him. We kissed his hands and his feet. We were in his sohbat. It is wajib on us to tell you about him. Sahib al-Sahib was born in a village in Kibris, in Cyprus. He was born in the village of Ali Fodes, which in Greek means the light of Ali. Because even the Greek people in that area, they saw the light of Shaykh and his grandfather Ali, who was himself a friend of Allah. The village itself was a place out of time and out of place. Even though it was after the removal of the Ottomans, when the world had been corrupted by communism, Kemalism, secularism, capitalism, fascism, and all the other isms, the village of Ali Fodes, it remained pure. And it produced a pure one. The Sheikh Abdul Karim, born to pure parents, to his mother and to his father, Sayyid Hajifu Atta Rabbani. That pure lineage 
was a chain of light that from birth connected Sahibul Sayyid to the service of his Lord. Because his ancestors were the grandchildren of the Holy Prophet Because his grandfather was the Holy Prophet Because his ancestors were Sultan Muhammad Fatih, the conqueror of Istanbul. Because his ancestors were Hazrat Abdul Qadir Gailani and Hazrat Maulana Rumi. His pure lineage was one of light. We are not saying this. Sultan al Awliya Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil al Haqqani said this. He said to Shaykh Abdul Karim, The Awliya's divine look is on you. For what reason? Your father is very connected with us. His father, Mehmet Dai, is very connected with us. Those above him in your family chain, they were pure awliyas that lived on that mountain. They were Allah's humble servants. They were in worship and prayer, and they were those who were not rebellious to Allah. All of them had the medal of sainthood. For that reason, it has come to you. The entire village, this village of people who had nothing, they were serving Shaykh Maulana. They only had bread to eat and water to drink. But even if one penny came into their hand, they would save it. And they would use it to serve Shaykh Maulana when he would visit them. Shaykh Abdul Karim was from the time of childhood carrying that rank and that responsibility. From his birth, he became the servant of Shaykh Maulana, Sultan al -Awliya. Because Shaykh Abdul Karim's father, Sayyid Haji Fuad, was one of the most brave, most dedicated, and most noble murids of Shaykh Maulana. Shaykh Maulana himself said, What Hazrat Abu Bakr was to the Holy Prophet, Haji Fuad is to me. You can still go to Cyprus, and the people will still tell you there was nobody more generous, more noble, more standing up for Shaykh Maulana more standing up for Islam and for the Holy Prophet wasalam, than Sayyid Haji Fuad. So many times the government was trying to arrest Shaykh Maulana and Haji Fuad, he would intervene and he would protect Shaykh Maulana. May Allah have mercy on him and raise his rank. Shaykh Afendi, Shaykh Abdul Karim, he did not have a regular childhood like us. When he was only eight years old, he had to make hijrah out of Ali Fadez because of the oppression of the unbelievers. At that young age, he already fulfilled the sunnah of the Holy Prophet He did not make hijrah for dunya. He made hijrah to save his religion. And he moved to the ancient city of Famagusta, an Ottoman city. And there he was always running to Lala Mustafa Pasha Jami to be in the sohbet of Shaykh Maulana. Shaykh Afendi said, when we were children, we would run and we would be so happy to sit on the balls of our feet at attention, listening to Shaykh Maulana. From that age, he was receiving the deepest instruction from Sayyid Haji Fuad because Haji Fuad said to Sahib al-Sayyif, be disobedient to me, be disobedient to me or to other family members if you want them to be disobedient to us. If you want, then be disobedient to us, but never be disobedient to Shaykh Maulana. If you are disobedient to Shaykh Maulana, then I will never forgive you in dunya and in ahirat. That was the beginning, the training that he had from childhood. Because from that tender age, he was being raised for a great destiny. When he went to school, he would sit against the wall of the yard and watch his friends playing. And while they were playing and running, he was sitting and he was thinking, how can I love that which is going to pass? When my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high and he is everlasting. He did not spend his time in games. He spent his time in the companionship of Shaykh Maulana and of his father. His favorite places were the maqams of the Evliya. He was very attached to the maqam of the great Jalwati Shaykh Hazrat Kutub Usman Effendi Qadrasallahu Sir. He would visit the maqam of the great Shahid who was the protector of Famagusta, Jan Bulat Pasha. From a young age, Shaykh Abdul Karim was running to serve and to do work. 
from a young age, the saint's divine look was on him. He was a shepherd. He was doing iron work. He was going to school. He was taking care of his family. He was cooking food. He was running to learn how to be a useful servant of Allah. He was not being raised to learn how to be a servant of dunya, how to run after this dunya. From that age, it was becoming apparent that he had a huge destiny in front of him. When he became older, when he was in his teenage years, Haji Fuad took Sheikh Abdul Karim to the holy city of Damascus. His intention was to send him to the service of Grand Sheikh Abdullah Fazl Dagestani. And at that age, Sahib al Zayf and Haji Fuad stayed in the presence of Grand Sheikh Abdullah for 40 days. Grand Sheikh sent them to Cyprus and told Haji Fuad, I see a great destiny for your son. I see that he is going to open a new continent for us and that he is going to make the people of America to say, La ilaha illallah. So they returned to Cyprus. But then war broke out. The Greeks attacked the Muslim people and were trying to eliminate them from the island. Sheikh Effendi ran to fulfill the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet and his Sahabis, the Sunnah of his Ottoman grandfathers, and he ran to defend the truth. He entered into the army. It was not easy. He was only 17 years old, and he was telling us the bullets, they were flying around him from every side. He came under attack from heavy artillery fire. He was wounded, but as he told us, the Himmat of Sheikh Maulana came and saved him. And from that war, he came out with the title that his grandfather, the founder of the Ottomans, the Sultan, Osman Ghazi had the title of Ghazi. And then the journey of his life brought him to a completely new place. When Sheikh Abdul Karim was 19, Sheikh Maulana ordered him to go to America. He said, go to America and be my Khalifa there. Just like Hazrati Ibn Abbas, who went to Central Asia without knowing the language, without knowing the people, Sheikh Abdul Karim came to a new land. And just like Hazrati Ibn Abbas, despite not knowing the land, people accepted Islam through him. People loved him and people were running for him. Sheikh Abdul Karim did not go to a nice part of America that was rich and comfortable. He went to one of the most roughest places in the whole country. He went to New York City, to the South Bronx, in 1979, when all the fires of racism and prejudice, they were burning there. He entered to that area and he became like an oasis. He was pulling people to Islam. He was saving people from that New York City jungle. He was walking in the streets with Sheikh Maulana's picture saying to the people, do you want to see the most beautiful man in the world? They would say yes, and he would show him the picture of the Sultan al -Aliya. Through his good manners, through his smile, through his generosity, he was pulling people to Islam. He was like Musa salam, but when he went to Madian, the people were so impressed with his good manners. In New York City, he opened businesses and he used those businesses as a means of bringing the light of Islam to people. He used to give jobs to people who had nothing. He used to give jobs to people that society had given up on them. He used to give jobs to people that they were nothing, but in the eyes of the people in New York City, they were garbage. He used to go around and give charity to the homeless people. He was pulling them out from that kind of dirty lifestyle and teaching them the pure teachings of Islam. He was living the Sunnah of Ibrahim salam, who never dined who never ate without having a guest with him. And in New York City, Sheikh Fendi went through a huge test. He had a brother whom he loved very much, Aihan. And Aihan looked just like Sheikh Fendi. They grew up together. They came to America together. And then one day, out of nowhere, without any real medical explanation, Aihan just passed away. And Sheikh Effendi by himself, he had to bring his brother back to Cyprus for burial. Sheikh Effendi went through this test all by himself in a strange and foreign land. 
his love for his shaykh, for Holy Prophet wasalam, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it never weakened. In 1981, Sheikh Effendi was in Turkey and he was arrested by government forces for saying Allah. He was put through the test of Yusuf salam, and the tyrants put him through so much torture, electrocuting him, doing other things to him, trying to get him to betray Sheikh Maulana. But like Hazrat Khubayb ibn Adi, who said, I would rather die than let a thorn touch Hazrat Muhammad Sheikh, and he never betrayed his Shaykh. He was released and he came back to America. Like Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gailani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Shaykh and he tremendous blessings and tremendous wealth at that time. And like Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adam, that wealth was then taken away. It didn't change, Shaykh Abdul Karim. Whether he had nothing or he had everything dunya-wise, he continued to walk in the path of Allah. He built a jama'at in America. He was having zikr in the heart of New York City for over 20 years. He was calling people to Islam. He was calling people to the love of the Prophet. He was calling people to the love of the awliya Allah. He was fighting against the Wahhabism that teaches nothing but hate all alone in this city. He was feeding hungry people. He was helping those who had become addicted to drugs to become free from that slavery. His hand was always open and was always giving even when others were betraying him over and over again. Even when those ones that he had fed turned around and they bit his hand. Because he did not do it for others. He did it for Allah's sake. He was a sultan who was wearing the clothing of a normal person. He was hiding amongst everyone. But he is known to Allah and his Prophet. He went to Turkey in 2001. And he had a mevlid. And in that mevlid, while they were making zikr in Izmir, the government forces, they attacked him. And they arrested him. And they came with guns. And they were hoping that there was going to be confusion so that they were going to use their guns and finish everyone that was there and say that these are terrorists. He didn't fight. He put his head down and he said, Hasbinallah wa ni'mal wakil. Just like Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he told his people not to fight. He was brought to the court. And all those who called themselves his followers were brought there too. And in that court, he went through the sunnah of Isa alayhi salam. All of his followers looked at his face and said, I don't know this man. They all betrayed him. And Shaykh Ani went to prison again to fulfill the sunnah of Hazrat Yusuf. He stood for haq inside the prison. He called azan in the prison. He made zikr in the prison. He pulled people to Islam and to tariqat in the prison. Just like the four mazhab imams, just like Imam Rabbani, he brought the light of Islam inside the darkness of the dungeons. He just trusted in Allah. After some time, he was released. And like the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he made hijrah again. He made hijrah to this place where we are now. To Siddiqui Center, Sydney Center, where the name of Allah had never been known in history. He came here and he made Allah to put his signature on this land. He came here and he brought the zikrullah to this place. He came here and he called the azan in these mountains that since the creation of Adam salam, had never heard the holy words of the kalima. Like the Holy Prophet wasalam, he built Medina and he built this place. He came here and he himself was like a mountain. He was towering. And like the Sahabis, people came here to be in his association. Especially in the early days, it was not easy. There was no heat in the winter time and there was no hot water. The winters were very harsh. 
The masjid at that time was a sheep barn, right where you are sitting right now. There were a hundred sheep running around. But their hearts were like rose gardens. They were happy in being in that association and walking in the footsteps of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Because for these young ones, who also came from the jungles of the city, they were tasting for the first time what it means to run away from the dunya and to run to Allah. Sheikh Effendi began traveling around the world and building his work because he had a huge work that he had been destined for to help prepare the world for the coming of Hazrat Mahdi Sheikh Effendi is saying, this is what my father Rahmatullah used to say, we are waiting for Mahdi to come. We waited and waited and when he knew, when he understood that he was going out from this world, he said, we waited for him, our time is up, we are going. But he said to me, as for you, there is a big possibility that you're going to see. He said, your grandfather waited, your grandfathers waited. I waited and he didn't appear. He said, he didn't appear in our time and I'm going. He didn't say, I don't know anything about him. He said, he didn't appear yet and we are going. He said, you might see him. Sheikh Abdul Karim was preparing the world for that appearance. He was preparing the world to protect ourselves from the fitna of Dajjal. Although he was banned from Turkey, he built a Jamaat in Turkey. He built Jamaats in Europe, in India, in Southeast Asia, in China, in Bosnia, in South America. All over the world, people were entering this tariqat through his work. And when he traveled, he was a light entering the darkness. He was exactly like the Salatul Taj, was describing the Holy Prophet the beloved of the poor ones, of the strangers, of the miskin people. When he went to India, people would just see his face and they would begin to cry. He was praying for them. He was feeding them. He was showing care to them. People who had been forgotten by this cruel dunya, they were not forgotten by Sheikh Abdul Karim. He was praying not only for the Muslims, he was praying for the Hindus, for the Buddhists, for other people too. His mercy, like the Holy Prophet ﷺ, was for the Ummah. He was building the work of his Shaykh all over the world. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent Shaykh Fendi the test of Hazrat Ayyub ﷺ. He was tested with sickness. People don't know this. We were with him. Those strong hands that Shaykh Abdul Karim had, they could not even open. His body was on fire when he tried to move. No cure was working. The only cure he found was if he took the bees and he let them to sting him and he's getting that bee therapy from the animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed and mentioned in the Holy Quran that they are working through divine inspiration. At the same time, he went through the test of the prophets like Nuh alayhi salam and Lut alayhi salam that even the people inside his house, they were abandoning him, betraying him, hurting him, breaking his heart. But Shaykh and he just said, Hasbin Allah wa ni'mal wakil. And he continued the way. He continued the work of his shaykh. Even in that pain, he would drive three hours to New Jersey in every weather condition to see the jama'at and to make zikr. Even in that pain, he would travel to Cyprus to continue the work. A normal person, maybe he was going to die in that pain, but Shaykh and he stood and continued and he was patient. And just as his health was coming back to him, he saw that his time on this earth for now was finishing. He told the Murids their instructions of how to continue. And to some, he told exactly what was going to happen. He went himself and visited the place that he was going to be buried. And on the 10th of Sha'ban, 1432, the 30th of June, 2012, he was veiled from this world. We say veiled because Shaykh Maulana says veiled. Shaykh Maulana said they took him to the other side now, behind the mountain of Kaf. You understand? To the side of Evliyas, 
the strong ones are on his side. They made him disappear from here. This is just a taste of who our Sheikh is. If we have a lifetime, we cannot describe him because Sheikh Mawlana said that Sheikh Effendi lived the lifespan of 50 men inside one lifetime. But we can say a little bit more about him. He was like Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq in his defense of Sheikh Mawlana, in his hizmat for the truth, in his total sacrifice for the way of Allah and for his tenderness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was like Hazrat Umar radiallahu an, in his secret caring for people in his sense of justice and his speaking up for haq. He was like Hazrat Usman in his total and complete generosity and modesty. He was like Hazrat Ali in his wisdom and his charisma and his knowledge. He was like Hazrat Hamza in his power and his bravery. He was like Hazrat Hussein in his sacrifice and his submission. And his voice, his voice was like the voice of Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam. He was beautiful, like Hazrat Yusuf. And yes, we say what Hazrat Aisha said. If the companions of Zulaikha had seen our Shaykh, they would not cut their fingers. They would cut out their hearts from Ashk. He had a dream like the dream of Sultan Osman Ghazi. He had a goal like Sultan Mehmed Fatihan. He could build a civilization like Sultan Suleiman. He had the worrying and care for this ummah like Sultan Abdul Hamid Han. And like the martyrs of Chanakala, he gave his life in the service of Islam, the service of Khilafat. We cannot describe him. It is as Hazrat Abu Hassan Harkani Qadassallah Sir is saying, people cannot describe me. No matter what words they use or what category they put me in, I am other than what they say. Let us call him what he called himself. He was an Abdullah. He was a servant of Allah. He lived with that title. He left this dunya with that title. He is living again with that title. His invitation to the whole world was this. Be a servant of Allah. Be an Abdullah. Be an Abdullah. His life, his character is perhaps described best in the words of the peer of our tariqat, Khwaja Shahin Naqshbandi, who said, the men of Allah do not admire what they are doing. They only act out of love of Allah. This is just a fraction of the reality of Sahib al Saif. If anybody wants to learn from him, they can come. His work continues, the service continues. May Allah give us the strength to continue this way. We are asking our Lord to be witness that we love him. For Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu an said, that on the day of judgment, the servant will be brought between the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked, did you love one of my awliya so that I can join you to him today? Ya Rabbi, in this holy day, we're asking you to witness that we love him. And we're asking you to keep us with him, dunya and ahirat. And we're asking for his sake to forgive us and to forgive our weakness. Amen. Subhan Kudus and over there, we like the war. Subhan Kudus and over there. Subhan Kudus. Be not denied, Allah is like Kabasola. Allah is like Allah, they Say no more than Muhammad Rasulullah.